Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tacoma Christian Center. And we say greetings in the name of the Lord to everyone here in the Puget Sound, the state of Washington, around the country, and all over the world. We are so blessed that our live stream is touching so many lives, having a positive effect, and the preaching and teaching of the gospel of Christ continues to go out in great strength from Tacoma Christian Center. I'm Pastor Harris, and truly it is an honor to once again bring forth what thus says the Lord. Before we get into the word, I want to give a shout out to my man, Pastor Daryl Lewis, and I want to say I love you, man. I love you, and you know me. Amen. And hopefully you'll know just what I'm talking about. All right. We are going to discuss today, he loved them unto the end. And, of course, we're talking about Jesus and a incredible scripture. It is one of those scriptures that a lot of people will read and just fly right by it. But during the season of COVID, man, I, I think that this is a very important scripture and powerful scripture and looking forward to this teaching today. So let us open our Bibles to the gospel of John and chapter 13 and verse 1. The word of God states, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. All right, so how many of you have ever known that tough or difficult news is coming? Have you ever known that? That maybe when you, 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 you go to bed at night and you know, man, tomorrow has the possibility <laughs> of being one of those days. <laughs> or uh, your morning starts and you know the afternoon stuff is coming. But you know there's something on the horizon, and you know it's going to be a challenge, and you know that it might be a difficult time. So here in the 13th chapter in verse 1, it lets us know Jesus knows. All right, I'm getting ready to depart. In other words, church, real plain, Jesus knows he's getting ready to die. Amen? I, my, my time is up here. I'm getting ready to leave. He also knows, because he's, he's not a dumb man. <laughs> Amen. He knows he's going to be crucified. Okay? And understand that when Jesus went to the cross, that was no surprise to him. Amen? He understood, because he's the son of God. He knows that there's going to be a lot of pain. Amen? There's going to be a lot of agony. Amen? There's going to be a lot of suffering. Amen? He, he knows that. And he's, wow, okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to go. And even knowing the difficult, tough path that awaited him, he continued to operate in love. Can you say amen? How many of us can say that? Even when we know it's a tough time that we can continue to operate in love. Wow, what a challenge. So we're going to walk through this and uh, hopefully give you some pointers on how to handle knowing that there's a tough time, but still operating in the love of Jesus. And when we look at COVID-19, it's like 
every day just kind of rolls together is, 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 is COVID. What is, what is the difference between a Monday and a Friday? Uh, a lot of folks are staying inside. Uh, then when you go out, a lot of the folks are mentally and emotionally stressed. There's a lot of craziness in the world, amen? And then you throw in the election, and, and it's, wow. But yet, Jesus set the example and said, you know, you can still operate in love, in love, even when you know tough times are coming. Jesus did it, and he has given us the power to do the same thing. Amen? So our very first teaching point. All righty. Continue to love knowing what lied ahead. What is out there? What, what, what is coming? All right. Let us believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can do this. I, I want to bring up number two. Okay, knowing another day of COVID, another day of COVID, does the bear come out of you? <laughs> what is the bear? The bear is, ah! Have you ever just been on edge? Somebody says hi to you, and you're going, hmm. You just kind of blow them off because you're just, you're upset. You're mad. The bear jumps out of you. Somebody says something to you, you just, ah, attack. Verbally ripping somebody's head off. And, and people around you going, oh, what's wrong with him? And it's all because, man, I'm sick and tired of COVID. I'm sick and tired of being locked up in the house. I'm sick and tired of life not being back to normal. Wow. Think about that. Does the bear come out? Your temperament on edge, frustration, bothered by every little thing. How many of you ever had a, had a, a, a person get on your last nerve? Mm, they just, how many of you have gotten mad at somebody because of the way they looked at you? <laughs> Man. A lot of that stuff has exploded during COVID. I've, I've witnesses at, witness it at the uh, grocery stores, just folks, wow. At the gas station, oh my goodness. And so we must then, in order to keep the bear locked up, everybody say that with me. Keep the bear locked up. Say it one more time. <laughs> Keep the bear locked up. Because many times when that bear jumps out of you, then later on, you got to go back and apologize. You ever done that before? Or if you, I mean, if, 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 if that bear really gets you, 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 it jumps out, you verbally annihilate someone, and then even when you know you should apologize, you don't. <laughs> Amen. This is just the way it is. <laughs> so how do, we beat, how do we keep the bear down? How do we defeat him? All right, and especially during COVID and when you know a tough time is coming. We recognize that when the bear is messing with our solic man, all right, and your soul consist of your mind, your thinking, your intellect. It also has your emotions. Say that big word with me, emotions. Yeah, the bear is in your emotions. So you combine the mind with how you feel and your emotions you throw in frustration from COVID and all that that entails. And then the other component where the bear lies, where the bear lies, the other component is your will. 
mind, will, and emotions mix with the bear. And those things just blow him out, and verbally it is unleashed. How do you control that? Well, recognize then with, with, with your soul where the bear lies, you also have someone else inside of you. Anybody know who he is? Yeah, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also there. So you got the Holy Ghost and you got the bear. Now, who's more powerful? Yeah, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but what we have to do is we have to summons up the Holy Spirit. He's in there. But remember, your will is also in there. And we've got to pull up the Holy Spirit and say, okay, before those words come out, before the bear leaps, catch it. Amen? Catch it and go, okay, greater is he that is in me. And that greater is he that is in you is not the bear. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the Holy Spirit is more powerful than the bear. Say it with me. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than the bear. So we, we summon, we pull up. Okay, Holy Spirit, come on. I understand that there's a lot on my plate. I understand how I, I'm, I'm not feeling, you know, real well. But before I verbally annihilate someone, I'm going to pull up the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so this, this means that we are aware, we are aware that the, the bear in us is ready to pounce. How many of you know yourself? Have you taken the time to know yourself? Pastor Harris, I know me. And it would be ashamed if I didn't. I'm 66 years old, amen? <laughs> By now, I should know me, amen? So think about how old you are. And do you know you? Do you know what makes you tick? Do you know what launches the bear? Do, <laughs> have you taken the time to know you? Do you know how your buttons are pushed? Amen? And recognize that there are times when the bear needs to come out. What? Yeah. When... You are dealing with Satan. You're dealing with, with something where you need to rise up mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and verbally. You need to rise up and deal with something. Okay? It's called tough love. It's called righteous anger. And you need for the bear to come out. Okay? That's a good thing. And there are times where you need to be hardcore and tough, and you need to put a little mm behind your words. Can anybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. Remember that Jesus did this. Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, his toughness came out often. Okay, some of you are familiar when he beat the guy <laughs> in the temple. I mean, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, took a whip. And he whooped folks, whooped them, put them out the temple, whooped them, and put them out the temple. Not only did he whoop them with that whip, he also took the tables where they were all set up, and he, what did he do? Bible says he did what? Yeah, he flipped the tables over. Now, I do not believe that he went in, okay, I'm going to flip the table. No! <laughs> He went in there, whooped them, flipped the table. Man, he tore that place up. And he didn't do anything wrong. The bear in Jesus was unleashed. <laughs> and he cleaned the temple out. Wow. And he yelled at him, You money changer, get that out of your eye. <laughs> and that was a good thing. Okay, so understand that the bear can jump out, but it's got to be at the right time, amen, and it's, and it's got to be motivated and pushed by the Holy Spirit. 
Wow. Many, many times as a pastor, the bear under control and unleashed by the Holy Ghost has come out of me where I've dealt with tough things and I had to be stern and say, look, and, and boom, we're going to deal with this. The other times where the bear needs to come out is when Satan is trying to run all over you. Do you know that as a Christian, no place in the Bible does it say that you should be a doormat? It does not say it. Do you not know that the only time Jesus laid down and took it was when he was getting ready to go to the cross? When he was going through his, uh, the, the questioning, the beating, the plucking of the beard, uh, after the Lord's Supper, he went out and, and of course, he was, he was grabbed and taken and the trials, Caiaphas and Herod and the high priest. Yeah, he, he took it all then. He, okay, I got to take this. But for three years of ministry, he fought back. He rebuked the Pharisees. He was hardcore. He was tough. The bear came out several times. He rebuked people. He unleashed the, the, the woes, the seven woes on the fair. Woe is you. Woe is you guys, you hypocrites. And, and I mean, man. And he in public rebuked and tore those Pharisees up. Okay? And he did nothing wrong. So we recognize when that needs to come out. But on the other hand, controlling the bear when he shouldn't come out. Everybody understand? How many of you know the difference? You know the difference? All right. So understanding when it should come out, when it shouldn't come out. All right. And again, we win that battle through our discernment and through the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Okay, let's take a look at point number three. And today we got a total of, of, of five points. All right. Let's talk about the end of the day. Okay. Nightfall. And for those of you with children, those of you married, those of you that have uh, someone else living under the same roof. It's time for the day to end. Showing love regardless, regardless of what has happened in the day. Do not go to sleep all puffed up with anger. Go to bed mad. Just getting, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm mad at da, 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 da. No. Make sure by the end of the day you have flushed. Okay, this day is over now. This day has ended. Because our opening scripture, Jesus did what? He loved to the very end. That's to the end of his life. For us, that's to the end of each day. So we end the day with love. Say that with me. We end the day with love. One more time. We end the day with love. Do not go to bed angry. Mad, you get in bed and you're tossing and turning and talking to your, yourself, gripped with rage. Man, how, how, what, what kind of way is that to go to sleep? Amen? So, ending the day with love. You can have peaceful sleep, sweet sleep, because I'm going to have the love of Jesus all over me when you lay down and close your eyes. Can the church say amen? Everyone following me? Everybody going to take on this teaching? Amen? And so that might mean that before you go to bed, you have to sit down and talk with your son, with your daughter, 
you got other adults living in your house, you might have to clear things up. Especially if you know, as, as, as a Christian, and it's, everybody is going to their own rooms, going to sleep, and you know, okay, there's some ill will with somebody else under my roof. Man, clear that up. Show the love of Jesus and get that stuff cleared up so that the next morning, y'all ain't sitting around like, like my mother used to tell me, blown up like toady frogs, mad at each other because you went to sleep with a bunch of unsettled stuff in you towards somebody else. Can the church say amen? So we show the love of Jesus. We end the day with love. All right. Let's go to our next scripture. And we got two more points to hit. The Gospel of John and the 14th chapter in verse 1. Well-known scripture. It says, once again, these are the words of Jesus the Christ himself. Let not your heart be troubled. Us, you, ye, however you want to say it, believe in God. Believe also in me. All right. We can accomplish this. Pastor, are you sure? Yes. Let not your heart be troubled. Okay, well, what about during COVID? Okay, what about it? Even during COVID, we can be at peace in our hearts. Now, recognize the fact, I'm not talking about if you are (laughs) and you you, you got, man, this is crazy and my, my body. What we're talking about is all the crazy outside stuff that goes on with COVID. Okay, craziness on the job, or let's say that you get laid off, and let's say that your money is funny. All those types of things, we still say, let not your heart be troubled. I am convinced that Jesus made this statement with full knowledge with full knowledge that there were going to be tough times here on planet Earth for his people. Amen? Even with that knowledge, he still said, let not your heart be troubled. Now, if somebody has COVID and they are on their deathbed, which I never have experienced before, but somebody has COVID and they're on their deathbed and they don't want to die, I don't know how much peace somebody will have with that. They're on their deathbed, and if they're fighting for their life, can you say amen? You understand what I'm saying? I, I, I don't have that experience. But I do know that under regular stressful situations with COVID in the world, our hearts can be okay. Everybody hear me today. Okay, we're not going to allow COVID to freak us out. Amen? We're not going to allow it to tear up our homes, tear up relationships, because Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Okay, so point number four. Because Jesus loves us. Now remember John 13 and verse 1. He loved us till when? To the very end. He loved us till he got up there on that cross. And on the cross, of course, he showed the ultimate love. He died. Took on the sins of the world. You you know all about that. Okay? So because he loves us, we take John 13 and verse 1, and now... We tie it in to John 14 and verse 1. And these are two scriptures really easy to remember. 13.1, 14.1. Very simple. 13.1, 14.1. 
So because he loves us, and because he loves us to the very end, we are his, we belong to him. He loves us till the end of the day. He loves us till the end of the week. He loves us till the end of the month. He loves us till the end of the year. And he loves us to, from the start of a situation that comes into our lives to the end of that situation. He loves us. And because his love never ends, guess what? He can make the statement to me and you, everybody say it with me, let not your heart be troubled. Why? You're loved. Because he loved us. And the person that is doing the love, which we're getting ready to get into, is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God. So, with our minds, with our thoughts, when need be, pull up. I'm loved. Two words. I'm loved. Okay. Ooh, I'm loved. Jesus loves me. All right. Let me just take a chill pill. <laughs> I'm loved. Let me get it back together. I'm loved. Jesus says he loves me, so let not my heart be troubled. I feel massive stress. Stop. Okay. Pull it in. Remember, I'm loved. Satan attacks. Okay. Pull it in. Remember, I'm loved. People turn against you. All right. They might not love you. <laughs> but... Jesus loved you. So you are what? You are loved. Okay? We can do this. Well, how do I know? Because the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So I know we can do this. Can the church say amen? Because he loved us, let not your heart be troubled. It's, it's so important as Christians that we are able to take Scripture and from our hearts, if it's not in your heart, put it in your heart, and then be able to pull it up when needed. Everybody following me? Be able to get that Scripture. Okay, what does the Bible say? What does Jesus say? Oh, okay. Pastor talked about John 13, 14. And verse 1, I'm loved, and he loves me to the very end, the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the year, I'm loved. Therefore, therefore, there, therefore, don't let stress, worry, anxiety kill me, <laughs> okay? I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. Can the church say amen? Making sense to everyone? All right. You, you notice Christianity, Christi, Christianity is action. Yeah, we believe, we confess our names in the, in, the, in the Lamb's Book of Life. But here on this earth, there are things that we need to do to activate Scripture in our lives. We got to pull it up. We got to think it. We got to make that effort to remember and apply it, and apply scripture to our lives. Okay, my time is uh, clicking down, so let's hit the fifth and final point today. This is equally as important as one through four. Know this, Christians, that the Father and the Son are one. Let not your heart be troubled. If you know God, you also should know Jesus. Amen? Remember, Jesus is the Son of God. The Father and the Son are one. So we have God the Father. If you know it, say it with me. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Know all three. 
understand the position of each one. The Father is on the throne. He's over everything. Jesus right now is at the right-hand side. You should all know this, praying and interceding for us. The Holy Spirit is here on the earth, active, carrying out the orders and the will of God the Father on, or on the throne in heaven. So the Holy Spirit is not only active throughout the earth, but the Holy Spirit is also in you. This should lead to more peace, to more we're going to be okay. It should have a great effect in our lives. Know the Father, know the Son, and know the Holy Spirit. Can the church say amen? Also, under the orders and control of Jesus is a whole host of angels. And those angels are on assignment for me and you. You have angels assigned to you. Angels are working with you. Angels are working for you. You have angels protecting you. You have angels giving you messages. You have angels carrying out the orders of Jesus to get blessings to you. And most of you, most of us have two angels, okay? Most of you have a couple of angels, and they are with you. All right, so you join that team. I call it the Godhead team, consisting of God the Father, that's one, Father God in heaven, two, Jesus Christ the Son, three, the Holy Spirit, four, angels working with us and for us and on behalf of Jesus the Christ, and, of course, the fifth part of the team is you, the born-again Christian. Everybody got it? All right. So we wrap this up knowing that he will love you all the way to the very end. And knowing that he's going to love you till the end of days, the end of your time. When you get ready to leave this earth... Heaven prepares for you. Jesus said, what? I go to prepare a place for you. Your homecoming is set up. Jesus is going to come down, and when you take your last breath, guess who was right there to greet you? Jesus. Then you and Jesus, and, and if, if it's your angels, turn, and you make that wonderful trip to the sides of the north to heaven itself. And there, I'm told, people that have had experiences, that have died, gone up and come by, they all talk about when they got to heaven, there were loved ones that were there waiting for them. Said hi, whatever, boom, boom, and then they went back to the earth and woke up <laughs> and came back. So, all the way through all your days here on this earth, even throughout, when you get into paradise, you are loved. Amen? Hey, so we're going to pray for all of you today. And we're going to pray that this message really sinks in and it will produce fruit in your life each and every day. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we pray for everyone that's watching, that's listening. Father, that you will empower them with the love of Jesus. One, Father, that they will know how much they are loved. And two, they will be able to show the love of Christ throughout the day. Especially tough days with COVID, they will still operate in that love. Father, we ask that you bless them and help them and do this in us and for us. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. This is Pastor Harris reminding everyone now that God is with you, He's for you, and He's on your side. Blessings! Have a great week.